So last episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, we were left off with Itadori unable to transform back into himself from Sukuna taking over his body. And because of this, Sukuna has now turned up to face Fushiguro and you know what? Try to have some fun with him. I think what it is is that the excitement of being free from Sukuna is what made him want to have his muscles and his arms stretched because let's be honest Sukuna hasn't been able to walk around freely for this whole time that we've seen him and for him to actually go against Fushiguro well let me tell you that was actually a crazy battle it was really kind of one-sided but honestly I really like the depth and the action that was going on between the two the way Sukuna just basically ripped off his shirt and ripped out his heart which was more like a handicap for Itadori in wanted to switch back because that would have caused him death it was also very dangerous and very unpredictable Sukuna to do Sukuna seems to be the type of guy who really wants to stay alive and really wants to enjoy his life of coming back to life and basically he just did what he had to do to confirm that part of him it goes to show though that Itadori still has control of his body because towards the ending of the battle Itadori came back and he had actually passed away which is actually just a shame I kind of didn't really expect him to really die I kind of really expected him to go into that the special realm of where Isukuna stays when Itadori is basically living his life and like when they switch and that was shown that towards the end the one-sided battle was just like really intense the way Sukuna flew around smacking Fushiguro around through walls through buildings like i was like whoa i can't even believe this is going on i was thinking to myself okay i get it sukuna doesn't really want to hurt the boy he really wants to make me have fun with him but come on sukuna man you're really taking a piss at this point in time like it's not fair on fushiguro like at this point now it's like bro sukuna if my boy fushiguro actually really decides to go all haywire on you now and yes you still might kill him like you're just really playing with your meal at this point you know what i mean and it's not fair on fushiguro to go get sukuna i like the way sukuna kind of hinted to him that his talent of using shadows to call up curses is very unique and it's very adaptable which means to me that when Fushiguro decides to fight later on when he does get better at his techniques he's going to be able to change his curses into other things it said it was adaptable so that's what I kind of took from it and plus it's shadow do you know what I mean shadows can take the form of anything you put a can of coke and there's a shadow behind the can of coke do you know what I mean like you can stand outside in the sun and behind you there's a human shade do you know what I mean so I kind of got that it's adaptable through that kind of sense and if it is then <laughs> round of applause to me you know what I mean we got introduced to three other characters after the confirmation of death by Gojo and his other apprentice well member of the jujutsu sorcerers which to be honest she's a doctor which does more of a dissection towards the dead and finds out more about the jujutsu member which in this case is sukuna's vessel named lira san and gojo also mentioned how the higher ups kind of sent the first years on a suicide mission mainly because he wasn't around so they kind of took that advantage to get rid of Sukuna do you know what I mean and Itadori who is basically the vessel of Sukuna now I'm getting the sense that the higher ups don't really like Itadori and they kind of see him as a threat being the fact that he is the vessel of Sukuna and being the vessel of Sukuna it must come with its dangers because think about it like this Sukuna has I believe what 20 to 18 fingers that needs to be digested before Itadori and Sukuna can actually have some form of incredible feat going on within between the two and I don't think they want to get Sukuna back to that place of strength where he was very unstoppable now the last time they killed Sukuna or sorry trapped him or split off his limbs was when he was in his own body it was his body originally and now that he's in Itadori's body and he's now eating two fingers I think maybe three he is unable to switch back and take control of Itadori's body, meaning Itadori's body is literally his own body. So I feel like the more he eats fingers, maybe the more he gets closer to his own true form. But I kind of doubt that. Plus, Sukuna did mention that it's dangerous for Itadori to use him without a pact, meaning I believe that a pact is going to come later on down the episodes. And this is not the last time we are going to see of Itadori. Itadori is going to have his one-on-one -on -one show with 
Sukuna and hopefully he can get a pact going on where anytime he does need to use him he can call out for Sukuna in desperate situations and within those desperate situations it can be within his favour to end the situation literally now we also got introduced to three other characters um, mainly two characters in my opinion although we did see three more besides the other Jujutsu sorcerers okay the ones that I'm talking about is Panda, Inumaki Senpai and Zenin Senpai who is a Jujutsu sorcerer who is able to wield weapons and she's very good at it now these are the second years who are upper classmen of the first years to Fushiguro and his team which includes Itadori and Nobara and after the sudden death of Itadori their plan is basically now to get stronger so that they don't have to have to live that pain and suffering of having a team member pass away now they're going to be going up against the team of Kyoto and that team we haven't been introduced to so you know it's going to be again it's going to be Japan versus Kyoto Jujutsu Sorcerers and normally they don't have time for it but they got time so you know it's going to kick off the last bit I want to talk about are the demons who are trying to go up against humans they seem to have a negative look on human beings and on how they feel as though they are the true representations of energy that the humans give off because humans tend to hide their true feelings by telling the truth and masking it so they're more of like a coin is what the is what I'm trying to say humans are more like a coin if a human is able to show you a good side of them then there's definitely a bad side but because the cursed demons are made from just one point of one side of the humans and they are getting killed by Jujutsu sorcerers they feel as though it's time for humans to die and cursed demons to rise now with the help of this main guy i'm not sure who he is whether he's a jujutsu sorcerer or just someone capable of look seeing curses he told him that the plan for the cursed demons to win the battle against jujutsu sorcerers and humans is to basically get itadori and sukuna on their side and get rid of gojo sensei which to be honest i think that's quite an incredible feat if any of the demons can take him out really and truly i'm gonna let you guys know that gojo sensei is most likely so unbreakable so untouchable within this anime and you gotta really understand why he's the strongest why they've claimed for him to be the strongest he's not no push around but yo this episode was great if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe especially if you're new whether you're watching or listening to this in the morning afternoon evening it's been your boy roost or mr 36 and i'm out peace